Welcome to Stonehenge. Well, the visitor center at least. Today we are at one of the most famous historic monuments in the world. We are at Stonehenge, but to get there, there's a little bit of a journey. First you park here at the visitor center, and then you either take a bus or walk over to the actual stone circle. I am thrilled to be here today. I've always wanted to see Stonehenge with my own eyes, and you guys are coming with me today. Let's go check it out. <laughs> we purchased our tickets online in advance, so we've already gone through and given our confirmation number and got our tickets. We're going into the visitor center. The Stonehenge zone settings, Woodhenge, Durrington Wall Settlement, which I think that's outside, or at least a replica of it, and Avebury, or about 2500 BC, and Great Pyramids of Egypt. And this is also an Avebury. Oh, cool. Okay, so maybe we'll see that too. And then over here, much later, we have the Parthenon and the Colosseum and the Easter Island statues and Machu Picchu. Probably one of the main things people think of when they think of Stonehenge is the solstice, the sun, and the stones aligning with the movements of the sun. It's part of a larger complex of a prehistoric landscape, and we're gonna see a bit of that complex today. And there we go, at the end of the day, the purpose of Stonehenge is lost to us. There will always be debate about its meaning. And that mystery is part of what makes it so fascinating. You used to be able to just walk up on the stones and take a photo. Not anymore. Can you move the stone? This is an exact replica of Stone 60, one of the upright sarsens of the inner horseshoe. All right, challenge. Can you move the sarsen stone? Yes. You kind of like feel, it feels like it tricks you. Yeah, I think I can do it. Oh, I felt it move. I think I can. I don't want to embarrass anyone right now, but I can totally do Homes for the builders. The people who built a new Stonehenge probably lived in houses like these. So these are recreations based on the archaeological remains of buildings excavated at Durrington Walls. You can go inside one. Oh, like actually I thought it would be more toasty, but it's it's kind of chilly, but I feel like there'd probably be a fire in here. I don't know. Just I'm guessing. Maybe this maybe this corner would be like a fire pit. I don't know, but these are like things to like sleep on. And then these are actually cute. You could buy these at probably IKEA nowadays. <laughs> it's very cozy. Yeah, it's very cozy, but it's bigger inside than it looks like from outside. Look up there. It's all like Batched and insulated. How do you like it, Sam? Uh, very cozy. I can see myself settling in. Yeah. yeah. Get, get into bed. Maybe we'll ask yeah. how much the rent yeah. is. <laughs> it's probably really expensive. It's right yeah. next to a landmark. Yeah, it's hip. So we're, we're here at the visitor center, and you can either take a bus or walk out to Stonehenge. And I think we'll take a bus. We're going to opt for the shuttle today, right, Sam? We are. Just because, you know. It's wet, it's cold, be in a nice cozy bus, and also make the best use of our time today because we have other things we're doing today. And also, how was the drive here? Oh my gosh. The drive here was not great no? for me. It was very beautiful, the countryside was very beautiful, but uh, I tend to get a little motion sick and the roads were like constant curving and bumping and I'm not used to that. It's the countryside. And it also like being on the other side of the road was like, very disorienting and discombobulating, so I was like, oh, You oh. thought you were gonna die. <laughs> Not necessarily, but I thought I might lose my lunch, maybe. You but didn't, I didn't, I held it together. You didn't see any of Marlborough when we went through. I know, I didn't. I was like, oh, there's a sheep. Oh, I couldn't like, but hopefully it's better on the way back. Here we go, to the stones. Okay, we're on the bus, we've got our seats. Thank you. Thank you. Here we are. Oh, look at the sheep. There's just sheep grazing, and there it is right there. You can see all the people. There's the heel stone over there, and there's the main 
stone circle and there are people everywhere and also sheep everywhere and there it is this is as close as we can get right now we're gonna try to get closer but wow so they're about 13 feet high which is hard to tell in scale but we'll get a little closer we found kind of a good spot there's a lot of people taking photos here and Sam are you eating a pasty? I love pasties. <laughs> but yeah this is a great photo spot and you can go around it just a little bit of ways away from it because obviously they're trying to preserve this and have people not trampling all over it like you used to be able to but this is right there that's right there and there are a lot of people but it seems like there's moments where areas will clear out and you can get like that good view and that good shot some of the stones are like fallen over and some of them are just freestanding but some of them have the stones across the top which is the kind of famous view that we all know over there there's a nice kind of half ring that are held together really nicely and these two i don't know there's just something so beautiful about them. I just took a really nice panoramic photo from this spot. I know I'm just in kind of one spot and I need to go all the way around, but wow. Just even being like lined up right here. This feels so cool. And then over here you have sheep and countryside. It's so pretty. They were talking on the bus about how they've restored this area a bit and kind of made it back into beautiful farmlands for people to enjoy, which is really nice. As we walk around the circle, I'm going to stop at various intervals just to show you the different angles of Stonehenge and how it looks as you kind of go around the circle walkway, the circular walkway out here. Over there, it's very far from it, but right here you can see this walkway is very close, and that's where we got the best photos so far. But we'll, we'll try from every angle just to show you guys what it looks like, and what your photo ops would look like, and what you're taking in with your eyeballs. Um, but look back there. You see all those cars? There's a road just right there. And it's, a, it's like a jam-packed road, you see it? Just right there. It's the main road. Juxtaposition, the ancient and the modern. Aubrey Hole. Oh look, a bench, so you could like sit here and take it in. Do some drawing. You could do some drawing, you could, is this wet? No. It feels, it feels dry, everything's kind of wet, so you know. Do some drawing. So you can see this outer ring around it that's kind of a ditch, and it makes an indentation in the walkway here as well. You can see people coming and going all day long. We'll stay on this roped off walkway here. Part of it's got these squishy things and part of it's just kind of mud and grass and whatnot. But over there was a little bit more of a paved walkway. Look, there it is again! We're Far away now. Yeah, now we're in the sheep field. We found a little bit of a plaque here explaining some stuff. So the midsummer sunrise and midwinter sunset. Stonehenge is celebrated for being aligned on the midsummer sunrise, which attracts thousands of people on the longest day of the year. It'd be so awesome to be here for that, maybe one day. But more important to prehistoric people may have been the midwinter sunset. So if you were to stand right in the center of the monument and look towards the avenue, the sunrise is just the left of the heelstone. The heelstone is on the other side. We'll walk over there and see that soon. When other stones were standing in the entrance, it may have given the impression of a corridor along which the sunlight would have shone into the center of the monument. And here they've also got some of the stones named the Trilithon, the Tenon, there's the Solstice Axis, the Sarsen Horseshoe, those are blue stones, and the Star Sarsen Circle. So we'll look at those a little closer as we move back along the walkway and get closer again. So that tall square one is the Tenon, and there's the Sarsen Horseshoe right there. We're gonna go on that side of it soon. And the Sarsen Circle. That was the area that I first said look the most kind of complete and like what you kind of see in movies and picture. We've circled all the way around to the other side and now we're in front of the Sarsen Horseshoe and that's what we were looking at from that side over there but now we're over here looking at it from this side and over there is the Sarsen Circle because of the Sarsen Stones. 
So we're gonna walk around and go look from that side. It is so cool. This is the heel stone. Oh, there's the heel stone right there. We're gonna go look at that. Oh, we're gonna walk all the way around to see it, but it looked when we first pulled up like we were gonna be far away from it. I couldn't tell how close we were gonna be. And you're definitely closer when you first walk in, but even here, like, it feels closer than it probably looks on camera. It's like, kind of like want to take your time and like soak in every angle. And we are doing that. And then we'll make our way over to the heel stone and kind of get a look from the Sarsen Circle side. Just like yesterday when we were in Bath, everything's just like wet and cold and um, the floor is pretty muddy. So be prepared, wear boots. I definitely recommend picking up the audio tour. It helps a lot and there are little points that you stop at and listen to little bits of information. You can also download it on your phone. And you can download it on your phone, so you don't even have to pay for the audio tour if you don't want to. It's kind of overwhelming and hard to like process all of it. But it's cool just but, to look at. Yeah, super cool just to look at and think about the rituals that went on here. And the rituals that still go on today, like mm -hmm. all sorts of people still, I don't know if worship is the right word, but have like religious and yeah. spiritual experiences and beliefs surrounding Stonehenge. Yeah, and there's a new tradition now. You should always eat a pasty at Stonehenge. Okay, this is cool because this looks like it's topped off from this side because so much of the Sarsen Circle has the top stones, the stones going across the top. It kind of gives the appearance of more of a cohesive structure. It's actually really cool that the walkway is kind of so far away from it at different points because not only obviously does it preserve it and keep it from being trampled and walked all over by people, but also it does give you these nice, clear, beautiful views. You can see the people back there, but they look like ants. And you can really clearly see the stone circle without people obstructing the view all over. Look at this guy over here just relaxing by the sheep. Did I just hear a sheep make a noise or was that a little kid? I thought I heard like But there's people walking out there. I guess you can somehow walk out there. Walk with the sheep. Hold on, I'm gonna zoom up on the eating one. He's so cute. There you go, little sheepy. There you go. There you go. I heard him. Um, yeah, I think I heard him too. They're just there, oblivious to the historic and cultural importance, or maybe. Maybe they know. Maybe they know more than we do. The midsummer sunrise would be in that direction, and then if you walk along this, the midwinter sunset would be over there. And if you look online, you can see photos of the sun coming right through the pillars, like as if it was perfectly lined up to the heel stone right here. And there's a lot of spiritual and religious belief around the solstice and being here at those specific times of the year is a very special experience for a lot of people. Something I would absolutely love to do one day. Maybe we'll do that one day. That'd be cool, right Sam? Yeah. Yeah, I better be like, I think you have to book a special thing, but I would definitely do it. I did read that part of it's obscured by trees nowadays, but that it still looks really awesome and has a very special and cool vibe to it. So it said that it used to be two stones and the sun will be between the two. Oh, okay. It also said that it's buried deeper into the ground. Yeah. Like this, this is just the top of it. It goes down further. So like I was saying earlier, the Sarsen Circle is kind of the best preserved part of Stonehenge and the image that everyone has in their minds. And this used to be the entrance. It's not anymore, but this would have been like like it says here on the sign, it would have made a spectacular impression on visitors. Oh wow, the floor looked very, very different too. Now it's nice, beautiful grass. Oh, we also just read that the heel stone weighs about 40 tons. Wow. And here's the kind of 
ending view where you end up when you walk all the way around the circle. We started there where the bus dropped us off. We walked all the way around the walkway, all the way around there to the heel stone, got every view, and this is where you end up. Awesome experience being here. And the countryside is beautiful as well. Look at all the people. You can always tell when a fresh busload comes in because everybody congregates right there. But what they don't know yet is they get great views all the way around. When we were standing next to the heel stone, it didn't look that big, but getting a little further away, it is huge. And you can really see how big it is in perspective to the other stones and the people standing next to it. This is the closest view I've gotten of some sheep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, sheepies. They're so cute. Okay, we are leaving Stonehenge for now. I'm sure we'll be back, but this is my first time here. What a cool experience. It's absolutely beautiful, but we are not done seeing historic monuments today because now we are going to another ancient site with more stones. But wow, this one's really beautifully preserved. I mean, pr preserved. <laughs> it is amazing. Wow. Bye, Stonehenge. See you again soon. Maybe for a solstice one day. Okay, ready for some more historic stones? Let's go. <laughs> okay, we're back on the bus and headed back to the visitor center. We did it, we did Stonehenge. Awesome. We got here earlier today and there was like no line at all. We bought our tickets in advance online, which I do recommend you do, but you still have to wait in line to collect them, like a will call. But now, it's later in the day and there is a huge line, even for will calls. So, my one tip I can give you is get here early. Two tip, wear good shoes. Even if you take the bus, you're still gonna be on muddy pathways and grass and stuff. Um, dress appropriately for whatever the weather is and just be ready to have a lovely time. Take photos and soak in the beauty, the majesty, and the history. So now we're going somewhere else very cool and exciting to see another ancient monument. So now you've been here, did you figure out the meaning of Stonehenge? No. Welcome to Avebury. Is that right, Sam? Avebury. Avebury. I can't Close say enough. it right, guys. Close this enough. is a really cool town and its most basically famous landmark here is the Avebury Circle which is the largest stone circle in Britain, right here on this street. This is just a tiny, tiny part of it. It's a hundred stones, and there are sheep everywhere. There are stones there, but the most impressive part we're about to go to. Help ensure the survival of Avery. Avery's mysteries for another 6,000 years. Some areas are closed, so we've gotta be careful where we walk. Okay, so again, wet, muddy, need boots. We are prepared with our boots. <gasps> sheep! You said you wanted to be close to sheep, but mind the sheep poop. Oh, sheep poop everywhere. Oh, I think I just straight up walked in it. <laughs> wow, look, we're like right in the middle of the sheep grazing field. But if you think the sheep are impressive, wait to see the stones. Dun, 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 dun. Just one of 100 stones that make up Avebury, the largest stone circle in Britain. Another ancient monument like Stonehenge, but actually really more well-preserved than I expected. Look at the stones. They're beautiful. I'm gonna, and you could go right up to it. Mind this uh, bit of mud and water, but you can, you can touch it. Wow, that is so cool. Unlike Stonehenge where you can't get up close and personal you can get right up here next to the stones and like soak in the ancientness of them and the historical import wow this is really really cool so this Avery is part of like a larger area of historic monuments so it's like Stonehenge Avery and others of these stone circles that are all over the UK and Europe why? Because ancient people put them there 
for mysteries. <laughs> they found burial mounds near them, so probably like ceremonial, religious pur purposes. <laughs> mysteries. <laughs> Mystery. So what do you think of the stone, huh? I think this is cool, and there are lots and lots of stones. There are so many stones. We're just here, like, fixated on this one stone. Yeah. It's so massive and it's impressive. The but first stone we came to. Yeah, it's the first one. So this we're like, is the one. This is the one. This is our stone. This is our stone. I call it stone. There was a bird on that one, but it flew away. Oh, you've really got to mind the, the poop. There's another one, and you can tell it's, like, irregularly shaped. So you can see they're, like, eroded from their original form. Right, Sam? Yeah. Sam, I am trying to mind the sheep pieces. <laughs> what do you think about that? There are uh, good healthy amount, but that's good shows healthy amount. They're healthy sheep. Yeah, they're healthy. Look, they're right there. Don't don't touch it. It'll bite us. Bite us. I was told if I try to get near them, they'll probably bite me or just walk away. That's so cool. But even cooler. Dun dun dun. dun look at that stone. It's cool to see all the different shapes of the rocks as they've eroded over time. They kind of are like their own art pieces now. It's awesome how close you can get to them. And there's people all around looking them up. It's another mystery too and the circle goes all the way around. Look over there. There's more of them. You could touch the mysteries of history. Like, look how look how big it is. It's got the whole thing in the middle. Okay, there. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that's how big it is. And the pub that we're going to is right in the middle. Originally, there were 100 stones. Look, you can see so many of them still. And there are two smaller circles within the larger circle. So we're kind of like in the middle of... Well, we're not in the middle of the circle, but we're like inside of the circle yeah. right now. This is cool, right? Real cool. Do you feel the like mystical energies? I do. I feel like I'm inside something very special. Also, sheep. Something sheep. to do with sheep. Lots of sheep. <laughs> sheep. Look at those two right there. I mean, it's like one, but it's like two mushed together. The largest megalithic stone circle in the world. Oh, wow. New fun fact. Largest megalithic stone circle in the world. Do you hear that, sheep? Wow. You're in the presence of something amazing. Okay, we're going over to the other side. So I think these are markers where the stones maybe were. Yeah, I think so too. I think these smaller ones, that's what I was thinking, are probably markers of like where some of the missing stones, like like these are the big stones, and then they're smaller circles. Interesting. It's it's hard to get like a bird's eye view of it when you're down here. Right? Yeah, but when you see like it like from it, the air. Like an aerial view would be yeah. awesome right now, but we can only look at pictures online to try to situate ourselves. But yeah. being in it is just amazing. It's really cool. It's much more massive than Stonehenge. Yeah. Like the stones aren't necessarily yeah. more massive and all together, but yeah. the area, the expanse of area is it's huge. A completely different yeah. experience coming yeah. here to see in Stonehenge. Yeah. Yeah, it very may not be as famous as Stonehenge, but I definitely recommend, like it's within the hour of it that you come here. And it's a village, so we're gonna go to a haunted pub after this, by the way, spoiler alert. Spoilers. And it's inside the stone circle. Yeah, so it's the only pub in the world inside an ancient stone yeah. circle. I was gonna say that when we were over there, but what? I'm just too excited. You can't get it anywhere else in the world. No. Mm -hmm. This is cool though. This is super cool, and it's like not even that crowded right now. Look, that one looks like a hand. Just chilling. Just chilling on a Neolithic stone monument. Chilling on history. Just chilling on history. New series, chilling on history. <laughs> this stone is roped off and it's got a sign here that says erosion control. So they're trying to preserve the monument, which is of course wonderful. But some of them you can touch and some of them you cannot. We found this cool walkway. It goes up this hill and we get this really cool view. So we're gonna go up it. We're gonna go right, right up it. Climbing, wow, cool. And then you're rewarded with this nice view. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, wow. So they keep going all the way down there. So I think maybe that was a smaller circle. 
super cool. It's a little wet and muddy, so you gotta be careful. But this is beautiful. Oh, I do not wanna slip. You can see all the way back there, there's stones like all along the side of the road. So like these, these circles are massive. Huge. Yeah. Wow, so what, I think what we thought, what we were looking at over there that we thought, I think that's one of the smaller circles. Yeah. But, so Yeah, cool. because like, look over there. So. Yeah, there's another one over there. There's a bunch of smaller ones. And what's cool about the smaller ones is that like you are like in it. Yeah. You like really feel in it. Oh, I'm cold, my feet are cold. Whew, my boots are like not, I need a double socks. Another really cool thing about this that is distinctive is this cool like hill we're up here walking on and these amazing views like this isn't something you can do just anywhere and it's such a cool like it feels like a little bit of a hike so it's like I like being able to hike in England a little bit. Woo! You gotta be careful though. It's very muddy. I'm kind of walking on the side because it's still muddy in there. But it is cool. It is kind of like unexpected hiking, right? Right, Sam? Right. <laughs> Are you having fun? Yeah. This is really cool. I don't even know like where the other stones are. It's giant. They're everywhere. Look at that giant chasm down there. Woo. We're pretty high, huh? Yep. <laughs> Woo. Don't be scared of heights up here. How you doing there on this, uh, this path here? A bit muddy it's a bit muddy and it's a bit it's a bit high like and we've come a long way we've done like a pretty nice hike so far and then we've got a little bit more to go and we're gonna circle back around to the village oh gotta watch your step though <laughs> we're on the descent now we're going back down but that was a really cool like hillside hike and there are doggies up here so apparently you can bring your doggies just mind the chasm okay Back down, down. Okay. Thank you, Sam. There are more stones there, and we're on like a country road, even though there's a car on it. You know, whatever. It's still like a country road. Look at these beautiful houses. And it is cool that we're just in the middle of an ancient stone circle right now. Oh my gosh, sheep and stones. The thing I've learned today is wherever there are ancient stones, there are sheep. At least in the English countryside. Hi sheepies. Car, sheep. Car, ancient stone. They don't care, they don't mind us at all, but look at the stones. Wow, that's very beautiful. Let's get some food, huh? We're hungry. The red lion is apparently not serving food anymore, but we did want to come in here because this is a famous haunted pub. So let's see if we can just really quickly take a look at the haunted part. Thank you. This is it. This is the famous well. Oh no! Oh, it's glassed over now so you can use it as a table. That is so cool. It's 86 feet deep. And this unfortunate villager, her name was Flossie, right? Oh, I don't know. You know better than we I think it was Flossie. And they say that her ghost still roams the area. Her husband went away to the war and he came back and he found her with a lover and then he killed the man and he killed her and he threw her in the well and her ghost still roams. <laughs> the pub. And there are other ghost stories surrounding this pub too and it's a shame we can't get food because we were gonna hang out in here and tell some more ghost stories but instead Instead we'll have to find another pub, but that's okay. There's plenty of pubs. But we came here and we said hi to Flossie. Hi Flossie. Bless up. After calling around to several pubs in the nearby area, we found one that is still serving food. The White Heart. This actually looks really lovely and it's gotten chillier, huh Sam? It is chilly. Let's do this. Oh, it looks very cozy. What do you guys think? What should we get? Mm. Anyone have any ideas? You got fish and chips, mm. sirloin, mm. steak burger, mm. a pie. You like your pie? Oh, I like my pies. Shepherd loose pie. Oh, interesting. Sausage and mash. You haven't had sausage and mash. Oh, uh, we did though last night. Kinda. Wasn't that sausage and mash? Kind of. And then um, I ordered like a special Christmas beer too. Okay, we decided we're gonna get the lasagna 
with a dressed salad and garlic bread. And then we're gonna get the ground rump steak burger. And it comes with all this stuff. And then we're gonna share them both, right? Mm -hmm. Do a bit of sharing. A bit of sharing. So that we each get to try two different things. Cheers. Cheers. I thought that was an art face then. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. You're in it now. Yeah. Yes. Cheers. Oh, we also got a side of olives. We did. I like that you did that. He oh, said, do you like good. olives? I'm like, yeah, I like olives. He's like, bigger. side of olives. I'm like, oh. Side of olives. Can't get wrong. Can't get wrong. Yeah, can't get wrong. Cronenberg. Yeah, I like it. So, so what you get? IPA. This is IPA. It's good. Oh, that looks Jesus. really good. That's a uh, big lasagna. It's got garlic bread. And then you got the burger over here. Mm -hmm. It's got some coleslaw, yeah. some, some chips. They don't want this. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Cheesy chips. Cheesy chips. Got all sorts of good stuff. Science. Good. Yeah, it does look good. Let's dig in. We've asked for the pudding menu, right? That's what you call dessert. Yeah. Pudding. Well, both interchangeable. Yeah, both. Interchangeable pudding dessert. But you see, at first when they would say pudding, I thought it meant like pudding. So you got to learn. I mean, dessert. It's just generic. Overall term for dessert. But we do have baked American cheesecake. American. Ooh. You don't like cheesecake. No, I'm not a big fan of cheesecake. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. Mm, maybe. Ooh, you got the apple crumble. <coughs> you got three fancy ice creams. They look really good. Put it back together. So crumbly. Put the ice cream back together. I tried, I tried. <laughs> Scoop it. Ooh, I got a creme brulee with some like chocolate Shortbread. Shortbread. I was about to say biscuits, but it's shortbread. Looks wonderful. Let's just do like a. Let's just do this. Oh, yeah. satisfying. <sighs> Whew, cold. Back outside and it is chilly. Time to bundle up again. Oh, hi, Sam. Hello. <laughs> that was a really nice dinner, huh? Yeah, it was nice. I'm very full. I had to get like re bundled up again because it's. It's chilly out here. It is a little chilly. I got my gloves back on, hat back on. I'm ready to face the night. We also found this like little nook thing with like a heater in it, so that's it's nice. A smoking area. Is that what this is? Yeah. Oh, thankfully no one's smoking in it. Shame we couldn't eat at the uh, Haunted Pub, but this actually turned out really nice. Like yeah. it was very delicious. That creme brulee was one of the best creme brulees I have ever had, like I kid you not. And British lasagna was different. Yeah, the British lasagna was different. Like I expected like American lasagna, I'm used to like, I don't know if it's American where yeah. where it comes from, but it's like American layers lasagna. and layers of like yeah. pasta, like mostly pasta. This was like, I guess it was like one layer of pasta yeah. in the middle, but it was mostly just meat with like really, really good cheese on top. Yeah, that cheese different. was good, yeah. I thought today was really cool too because we got to show Stonehenge, which is the more iconic, famous, popular historic site that is like everybody knows about and we got to like soak in that feeling of like we are at Stonehenge and then we went to Avesbury which is I think lesser known I had never heard of Avesbury before today and it's incredible like it was beautiful it's like very different like yeah not better but yeah different feels yeah. like you're in the village, you're in the town, you can like touch the stones, there's no barriers, you don't have to pay any entrance fee, you can just walk right in. And then the pub, where we could, you could get a drink, but you'd wanna call ahead if you wanna eat there to see if they're open for food, because they stopped serving food at like two, yeah. which was surprising. Yeah, and we were still at Stonehenge. <laughs> yeah, we were still at Stonehenge at two. I'd have to get another pasty. Yeah, you'd have to get another pasty. I'm trying to like, Hashtag, warm. hashtag pasties at Stonehenge. It's not a thing. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining us today. We visited these amazing historic sites and got to see some different towns in England than I have ever seen before, which was really, really cool. As always, there are a lot more adventures to come on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed to Super Enthused. And if you wanna check out Sam's channel, that is Expedition Theme Park. And he has some amazing videos, very different than mine, both cool in their own ways, right? Yeah. So again, thank you for watching and we will see you for the next adventure. And until then, as always, stay, stay enthused. enthused.